Hey everyone, welcome to the newsroom. I'm Owen Poindexter, senior writer at Front Office Sports. Now, at Front Office Sports, we put out two newsletters a day, and if you read those, you'll be informed on the biggest stories that bring sports and business together. And what I found in the year and a half that I've worked at FOS is that when you find the overlap between sports and business, what you really hit on is where sports is most impacting the culture and the economy. And its presence in those realms has only gotten bigger, at least in the last few years. And that's honestly not something that I necessarily would have anticipated or expected, uh, just given that our world is moving more toward short form content and social media. And sports has not only found its place in that, but grown through that evolution. And the newsroom is where we are pulling out the biggest topics and trends and news um, in this realm. and figuring out where they, they're touching the, the, the culture, the economy, and, and growing beyond those. So today, we're going to hit on a, a topic that's been rocking the sports world, and our own AJ Perez has been really you know, leading the charge on reporting on this, and that is the unfolding Brett Favre scandal. So we have a lot to say on that. If you haven't been caught up on it, you will in the next 20 minutes, because this one has, um, it, it's big and it has some really serious implications for Favre. Uh, before we get into that, a quick message from our partners at NetSuite. 2000, 2008, 2022. When it comes to the economy, those are some scary years. Dot com crash, housing crash, and the roller coaster we're going through right now. One thing is certain it's a dangerous time to not know your numbers. But over 31,000 businesses have the confidence and clarity they need because they rely on NetSuite by Oracle, the number one cloud financial system. NetSuite gives you visibility and control of your financials, inventory, HR, planning, and budgeting, so you can manage risk, get reliable forecasts, and improve margins, everything you need all in one place. So how do you prepare for uncertain times? The answer, NetSuite. NetSuite helps you identify rising costs, automate your business processes, and easily see where to save money. That's why 93% of customers say they improve their visibility and control when they upgraded to NetSuite. What are you waiting for? Right now, NetSuite is offering a one-of-a-kind flexible financing program. Head to netsuite.com slash the newsroom right now. netsuite.com slash the newsroom. netsuite.com slash the newsroom. All right, now let's get into it. So our main topic today is essentially going to be how screwed is Brett Favre? And uh, we, for that, we've got our senior reporter here, AJ Perez. How's it going, AJ? Not bad, not bad. How are you doing? Good, good. But uh, before we, we dive into that, there's so much to talk about, Favre, but you had a story that um, it hit our site Friday morning, um, or maybe th late Thursday night, I'm not sure which one, uh, that Apple Music is is jumping in to be the Super Bowl halftime sponsor. It was Pepsi for a long, long time. All of a sudden, it's a, a brand new face and one that is making some moves in the sports world. Yeah, Apple's Apple Music uh, was is the new sponsor of the halftime show for a multi-year agreement. We don't know how long it runs. Um, reports are that was fifty million dollars that um, Apple is paying um, at the NFL for the for, for the rights. And within a couple of days, we had uh, we have um, the announcement that Rihanna is going to be doing the next Super Bowl in February in Glendale, Arizona. Yeah, yeah, very cool. And do you think this is a precursor to uh, to Apple maybe perhaps making a bigger move into the NFL? Yeah, everybody expects them and they're vying with, uh, you know, Google through YouTube and um, also through Amazon, Amazon Prime for the next uh, for the Sunday ticket, which has been the that's all the out of um, out of uh, area games um, that uh, that DirecTV has had since 1994. DirecTV is having massive issues this year with their streaming, which actually were a little better in week three yesterday. Um, but, uh, but it's, uh, it's, they're still, they're, they're still struggling. So it's, uh, it's, they're not going to, at and owns direct TV that they're, they're not going to bid. So it's, it's, it's opened the door. And uh, beyond that, Apple has been um, linked to talks about requiring a small stake of NFL media, which is NFL, NFL.com, NFL network. Um, you know, you got uh, red zone and, um, you know, NFL films. So that, so that's been on the market for, geez, so it's almost been a year and a half at this point. Yeah, I've done a handful of stories on this as well. And, you know, yeah, Amazon's in there. They really want this. Google is an interesting name because they're not they're not the first company you think of. Probably not the first in the first 10 you think of in terms of buying up sports rights. But um, I guess they're thinking about making a play here. The sense I've been getting is that the NFL would really like to make this work with Apple because, you know, 
millions and millions of people are walking around with an iPhone in their pocket and they would, and they want to go more digital. They want to go more streaming. They already have a nice relationship with Amazon. So yeah, Apple makes sense if they can make the money work, but it sounds like Amazon and Google, if nothing else, are going to make it not cheap for them. NFL's looking for, mm -hmm. the reports are 2.5 billion a year. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll see if they get that. I feel like usually you should take the over whenever you, you, you hear, like before the deal is done, um, but we'll see. Yeah, and beyond that, there's also what you deal with that um, that's been with Microsoft Surface, um, the Microsoft Data Surface line uh, for sideline uh, laptops and um, you know and their 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 tablets. Everybody calls them iPads anyway, so it would not I would not be too shocked if Apple somehow works it works their way into a um, hardware deal with the NFL either. Yeah, so that had not occurred to me, but that makes a ton of sense. Um, all right, let's get into our main topic here. AJ, you've been breaking some news on this over the last week or two. So Brett Favre is is in hot water, to put it lightly. So if, if you know, say someone uh, just saw your scoop on uh, Thursday or Friday about him being dropped from some Milwaukee radio stations, um, and they said, well, what's going on with that? I know there's a lot to sum up, but give us a little bird's eye view here. What's going on with with Brett Favre suddenly being a toxic commodity. This has kind of been a, kind of a slow burn kind of a story. This goes back a couple of years and Mississippi today and other outlets in um, Mississippi have been reporting on this. And it's, it's, it's a $77 million of alleged misspent welfare uh, funds and about $8 million, you know, not directly going to far, but through his lobbying, a lot of that went to $5 million allegedly went to a, a, um, a volleyball um, complex at the university of Southern Mississippi and his daughter played the sport at the time came out it came out in, in uh, court documents friday uh, we were in, and we reported on this uh, on saturday about you know him also lobbying for 1.5 million dollars uh, from from the same welfare fund and to go to a uh, indoor football complex at at the same college um and all it's a, all, all all in hopes to re you know, help recruiting uh, Deion Sanders quarterback prospect son at the time yeah. So and l let's be clear about where this money is coming from, because, you know, we hear about cities and states uh, spending much more money than that on sports complexes mm -hmm. all the time. Where was this money supposed to go? Yeah, these are TANF funds. So these are these are basically the this this is a welfare. This you, there's very limited uses for these funds normally because this the, these go to the most indigent, uh, these most, uh, you know, the poorest of our of our citizens um where it's like 400 dollars a month and then you know if you have it, it goes to families so even a family if you have mothers, a, a single mother or father of two they can't make more than 561 dollars per month um to qualify for these funds and it's you know so it, it's basically just to live off of and uh, that's where these funds are coming from and um and you now obviously far had and through his lawyer has denied that he knowingly took these funds but he already got caught uh basically with the speaking fees of 1.1 million dollars he paid back the principal, still owes the interest uh, for those speaking fees that came out of this fund um, that, uh, you know, for speeches he did not perform. Yeah. So, um, right. Yeah. I, and I want to get into the the texts that show that uh, it seems Brett Favre knew something was not above the level here. Uh, but yeah, the, you mentioned the speaking fees. So w what's the deal with that? And, and so that's getting pulled out of these TANF funds as well, correct? Yes, that's right. Uh, this, this, this happened in 2017, 2018. Um, and, uh, yeah, he was, he, he, he got these funds, um, and he was, uh, supposed to do these speeches now, how these speeches are going to help people, you know, who are, you know, who are struggling to meet their daily needs, um, how, what, uh, Brett Favre speech could actually accomplish, you know, that was, that's one thing, but, uh, but that's, uh, so that's, you know, that was the first bite of it. And I think, uh, you know, then he had a startup before that or around that same time. There was a there were he his uh, his startup got uh, two point two million dollars. This was a concussion uh, treatment tool, and it's kind of still going through trials. But it, it was basically a nasal spray, um, kind of like Nasonex or Flonase, but it's for concussions, where it was supposed to minimize concussion symptoms. Um, there's uh, you know they're still going through trials, but it, you know they that company ended up going bankrupt. Got that their their IP got bought by a company called Odyssey. Who I've been reaching out to can, <laughs> for the last ten days as well um, to see what you know whether he they you know whether they what they think about this and you know they quietly removed him from his, from uh, their website. Yeah, yeah. So he he's been um, getting removed from a, a handful of websites since this went down. And just to be clear on the speaking fees part of that, not only was that you know perhaps a bad use of public funds, but he didn't even make the speeches, which you know no, he did not. 
for for all the the scams to pull, I mean, man, if you're if you're getting paid a million dollars to make some speeches, how hard is it? Um, so yeah, especially you know, I, for a player who made over a hundred million dollars in his, you know, you obviously NFL players don't see all that money, you know, but they right. their agents get a cut. Uh, taxes, you gotta get taxes, but yeah, he made, you know, still made tens of millions of dollars after taxes and after his agent fees uh, as a player, and he still had his pretty, you know, pretty robust. Um, you know, for a former player, he's probably in the top 10% of, uh, you know, former players who have, you know, deals with these different companies. Only one so far sticking with them. That's Copperfit, who sent me that very strange statement that they're sticking by him and that he basically thinks they, they think he's innocent. So, Right. It, it's kind of like, well, you know, we've known Brett Favre for years and seems fine to us. Like he didn't try to steal any of our money. Uh, you know, we, we give it to him willingly, I guess. But um, but yeah, and th- that's the funny thing about this. I guess he just thought, you know, nothing was going to happen to him. Clearly, he thought that. But he he could make millions of dollars as a brand ambassador. I and mean, he was much loved. He wasn't one of these players that was kind of like love him or hate him. I'm sure people hate Fred Favre before all this, just because people hate any prominent athlete. But well, um, I think, well, there's one thing on that. There's he should not have been an endorser. I mean, what especially past the Me Too movement. A lot of the stuff he he, he did he he put with the Jets uh with with Den, with uh started with uh with the uh, Jets sideline reporter Jen Sturger you know those picks you know that that he sent out and that mm-hmm. that that should have been a bigger a bigger deal in 2010 he was also in 2013 he settled a lawsuit during the same time with the Jets with two massage therapists over over improper texts you know he mm-hmm. settled that in 2013 uh, we don't know the 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 terms of that. But there, are, those two things should have been disqualifying, and it should have alerted these brands that maybe, uh, maybe not the best pitch man. Yeah, yeah. I guess he had kind of skated through on that, and that's. I guess you know, it can be funny. It's a little bit of like an Al Capone getting caught on tax evasion kind of thing. I mean, not that this is tax evasion, or I guess it's tax. It might be. Wait, wait, we yeah, yeah, you know, right, that, yeah. could, that that could certainly. I know those. The, the the three you know federal charges that who the experts I talked to that that he could be charged with you know I didn't I haven't heard tax evasion but who knows I mean it's right, going to yeah. be a wire fraud it, it'll probably be wire fraud some other kind of fraud through this um and you know if if he you know that his lawyer was was playing up the fact that he that the FBI asked him one question that one okay. question is hey, Brett Favre have you ever been to uh, Biloxi Mississippi and he said, right. I was there when I was nine. And then the agents walked away. That was it. And his, his lawyer's like, oh, I asked him one question. That's it. Well, the FBI doesn't ask you questions unless they know the answers to them. So there's also a potential he lied to federal investigators, which is also a felony. Wow. All right. Yeah. And I wanted to get into what he's looking at in terms of legal liability. Um, so, I mean, obviously, best case scenario for him is somehow this blows over he, he still has copper fit, I guess. He still has presumably some number of millions of dollars and can go on living his life, whatever he's doing, not making speeches. But um, what, let, let's get in more into medium to worst case scenario here. What's he looking at? I mean, I think maybe he starts cooperating now. He's still, at, you know, he still has a decent chance of serving some prison time. Um, really? And uh, yeah, and I think that uh, especially, you know, even, I don't know how long that would be, you know, obviously restitution is going to be part of this um, and how, if they can, you know, this is why these texts are so important. You know, these, these texts were all in a civil case um, that were, that where he's a defendant and many others are um, during this, this was filed by the same agency, the new head of it. And uh, they've been, they've been going after these funds um, and, you know, trying to get claw the money back um, for, for a while now. And this lawsuit was filed this year, but you know, there's been other efforts to um, to some reckoning for all those involved, including the million dollar man, Ted DiBiase, who is also was part of the, the latest filing today. Um, you know, and he's he's implicated in this. And there's so many others are these this this money went to well connected people and celebrities that, uh, you know, instead of before. Yeah. Yeah. And, and we've we've mentioned the text, but let's hammer out that part of things. So, you know, the, the, this was kind of like. You, it, it tendered from a he said, she said kind of thing where Brett Favre says, I didn't, I don't know about any of this. It seemed all above the level to me. And, you know, investigators are saying otherwise. What do the texts say? Well, the texts are pretty, you know, and these texts have to be very, like, um, have to be, um, to be used in a civil or in a, in a criminal case, they have to be authenticated. So we, we can't, you know, we have to, that's why the subpoenas are important. And, uh, 
And, um, you know, if they can actually, you know, I don't know, so far, we don't know they've requested that from far, but, uh, you know, for all of the cell communications between these time periods, which is about 2017 through late 2019, um, you know, there's that, that's going to be major and that will be culpability. That's a little bit of determine what he knew, um, you know, through, through these text messages and possible emails um, about the scam. And if he, and if he knew what the money he was getting was from, you know, a fund that he should not have access to. Um, I know it was funneled through a nonprofit and which should raise enough concerns for anybody who's, you know, receiving uh, these kind of uh, state and federal funds that they, you know, that to get them, they have to kind of do something a little shady, which is what they did. Yeah. And from the ones I saw, which I think, correct me if I'm wrong, were with the uh, with, with Phil Bryant, who was governor yes, at the, the time. former governor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, and they, at least, if nothing else, suggested that Favre knew that this was at least something that would not look good uh to to the public he didn't want this getting out in in terms of publicity um and, mm-hmm. and perhaps knew that it was illegal what he was doing yeah the governor basically said one of the texts he's like i don't want to go to federal prison um you know because like you, you have to be you know the, these have to be you have to you know and and and, Phil, and so brian and in those uh all, all the texts we got uh, on Saturday, the, the, those from that civil case, you know, he's basically throwing Favre under the bus. It's like, you know, I told him, you know, I told him this, you gave, got to do this on the up and up and he continued and you know, pressed. And that, that well, and so that's why John Davis's plea uh, late last week, the former head of the welfare agency, you know, if he, if his cooperate and he's going to be cooperating, even though he faces around 10 years in prison, he faces much more. He had 20 state, state and federal charges. But the max so it could be over 50 years, but he's cooperating. So the plea deal, when he does get sentenced in February, it's expected to be, um, ex- it's expected to be in the 10 year range. So that's what you're looking at. You know, there's, you know, I'm not saying that Favre's going to get 20 charges, but there's at least a handful that he's potentially facing. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, you know, time will tell, you know, one of my legal experts told me it's within six months, he expects an indictment. Wow. Yeah. And, and I was just about to get into the John Davis plea. So who's the at the time head of Mississippi's welfare agency uh, pleaded guilty to. Yeah, you said 20 charges. Is that right? Um, yeah. And, and this obviously we don't know. We don't know what he's, he's saying to to investigators, to everyone else. But this seems like it spells trouble for Favre, correct? Yeah, far and possibly Phil Bryant, the former governor. Um, so yeah, it's not. It, it doesn't look good, you know. When when you have now we have the you know the two heads of the nonprofit that and that was most responsible for these funds getting to far. You know they they had already um, uh, taken you know, basically pleaded guilty. So now we have uh, John Davis doing so last late last week. So it, the walls are closing in. It appears on Favre. Um, you know you've, if but if it should if it's if if it can't be proven that he that he knowingly took these funds, you know, that's, uh, you know, that, you now that'll be good for him, but they're just so far from what we've seen. It looks like he, he, at least he had some knowledge of where these were coming from and took advantage of the system. Yeah. Is there a path out of this, a path where, you know, maybe he just, I don't know, pays some money or says very sincerely that he feels sorry for everything and, and can just, you know, get back to being a retired NFL player or is are those paths closed off at this point? I think at this point they might be, um, you know, there's, uh, you know, there's a lot we don't know. Um, and including, you know, I have a source, my, one of my sources down in Mississippi is saying that he's been on, he's been a target of theirs. I would say target. He's been on the radar for, for a, a long time and he continues to be, um, I've been, I've been trying to get information out of the, the, um, the county, what well, the county DA is the one's been leading a lot of this because the, um, you know, now, but now the DOJ is involved. The DOJ was involved. Uh, U.S. Attorney's Office was involved in the John Davis plea. Um, you know, he had John Davis had to go to court twice, basically once in state court, once once in federal court for those two, uh, for you know, to plead guilty. Um, and so this is there's 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 state charges, there's there's federal charges that could be coming. Um, but it's going to be, I think we're we're, we're going to know not you know in in the very near near future it looks like you know what whether you know Farb will be indicted and you know if. Uh, and what charges those could be, you know, I, that there's three or four, I rattled off earlier, you know, there could be more. Um, and, you know, every time you do something, there could be a, a, no, a, one more charge for that particular crime. And w- one that you, you touched on earlier, but I, I just wanted to make sure we, we didn't miss anything there, the pharmaceutical company. So <laughs> let's, let's just unpack that one a little bit. Is that something where okay. he could also be facing legal liability? And if you could also just kind of 
give us the start yeah. to finish I'll, on that. I'll like, what some, is this company? I'll, so it's a con- I'll break I'll break some news on this here. So okay. I actually covered this company uh, back in uh, back when it started. Um, you know, I got pitched, and it was like, you know, I talked to Brett Favre, and I was I was a USA Today. I'm like, well, he was going through the auditions for ESPN for Monday Night Football, um, and uh, and or it was ESPN analyst in some way, and you know, and it, he bombed that interview apparently. But you know, it gave me a chance to talk to him about it. Um, and, uh, and, um, and so, you know, I, I learned a little bit about this. It, it's, it's a, basically like a, it's, it's a nasal spray that, you know, if someone get, gets concussed, um, uh, an athletic trainer or someone with a medical training on, on the sideline or, uh, you know, at whatever, what, in whatever sport, what could it could quickly administer to help, um, to help with the symptoms. Um, and, uh, this, that, you know, they're still going through the, the, the trials and I'm not sure where it stands, but that company ended up basically going out of business. And, and, um, yeah, but during that time he was, uh, you know, I, people I talked to, um, who do about this deal where he, he got, and this, I don't think this, this figure hasn't been nailed down uh, by anyone, but he, he actually, this, this company got $2.2 million to, to, to start trials to, and to keep moving forward with their, with their research. Um, and Favre, uh, told, was, you know, told the head of this company or the executives of this company that it was coming from, you know, child welfare. He didn't say funds. He just he just said child welfare. You know, it was it was coming from a fund to help child to, to to help children's health basically. And so that you know that was uh, you know that means that should have raised. So that gives a little you know a one more brick in this where he you know he didn't especially say this came from a, this came from poor families. This came from a federal federal fund uh, for the most poor in the poorest state in the nation. But it it you know he there was some recognition at that point. Where you know where where far was it was was getting this money for this for this uh, startup called Prevacus? Wow. So, so he knew. I mean, maybe he didn't know it was TANF. Maybe he doesn't understand the whole like federal benefit system. But yeah, but he knew it, these were benefits appropriated to needy families that were exactly. instead going to his this this startup i mean startups yeah, go bust yeah. for any number of reasons yeah but well the, the there... term was child health children health i guess technically okay. i guess child, children get children get, get 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 concussed we did there was no welfare part of it it was for child it was for child's health i was told so it was uh you know that so that was uh, so that's you know that so that was you know you know that's people were the the people who were around that company were like well, what child why why didn't right. I mean, it's marketed it towards football help, players, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, it was this. Yeah, this was you know, basically driven by Favre. You know, this was this was pitched by so many. This was pitched to every media outlet three or four years ago when this started. Uh, you know, every major outlet was pitched Brett Favre. He was really, really pushing for funding and uh, from any from any any way you can get it. And a lot of people were kind of like, and especially I do a lot of concussion experts. I've been talking. I, I talked to you back then. We're like, yeah, that's just no way if that breaks the blood brain barrier. I know that's not going to help concussions. That's kind of very, it seems like a very, at least you know, for to a layman, like what, how could a nasal spray help with concussions? Um, but this is, this was, you know, this is when people still cared about CTE and stuff. So it was, it was a hot topic. Um, and it still is, you know, obviously we saw it too, uh, on Sunday, you know, that's, uh, which I'll be writing about today. Oh yeah. Um, so yeah, did, did, I'm sorry. I'm just trying to like put this all together here. But um, I, what I, I guess what I'm trying to figure out, it sounds like I, I, what I'm tr- trying to understand is was this company um, like definitely some kind of sham, or was it just no, kind of? No, I don't think it was. No, okay. no, I think it was a a lot of pharma startups start with big big ideas that sure, don't pan yeah. out. It's I mean the whole industry is littered with that. Where even Early, even if uh, non-human trials show some promise, that doesn't always. This way, we don't have an, an HIV vaccine after you know, how many forty, forty something years into the into the AIDS epidemic. There's certain things that just are hard to hard, you know, that are right. hard. The concussions for, are hard, uh, you know. To this figure, is not yeah, hard definitely, yeah. So it, you know, it, it it was a novel approach, and uh, even though some some of the experts who I worked worked on several stories with on concussion recovery doubted it, you know, that doesn't mean that it 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 ultimately couldn't have shown promise and could actually help people. Yeah, yeah, no, and that that is worth saying. That and if there is ever a you know quick solution to concussions, and it even sounds like you know almost offensive to say just because this has been yeah. such a, a confounding problem, especially in the NFL. Um, yeah, uh, and I, I, we're getting a little bit sidetracked here, but do we have a sense of have things gotten better in the NFL uh, on the whole concussion issue? I mean, this is something that was like 
so seems so damning and it seemed like something that could really like poison the league or like cause wide scale changes. And then people, like you said, just kind of stop talking about it. But yeah, but, uh, uh, this is something I'm used to. I like, I like, I started like in, I, in this kind of role, I started USA Today covering steroids. Then people stopped caring about steroids <laughs> yeah. and then concussions were huge. Obviously the biggest move thing in, in 20, in 2012 with the uh, concussion movie that Will Smith was in. You know, this people cared about this. And it was like in the New York Times and these players that they're interviewing. And I've interviewed players. I've broken stories on, you know, you know, players killing themselves and their, you know, wives. Yeah. And, then, you know, talking to their wives and their family members. And then months later, um, the Boston University's um, CTE um, program, you know, they, they, uh, they, you know, they showed that, you know, now, now it's hundreds of NFL players had CTE. And despite this, every, you know, they, and they're still doing their work. You know, there's still no no test uh, in the living for CTE. They still have to do it post mortem. You know, these players are still dying. You know, they had a big. Um, there was a big uh, settlement several years ago at the NFL between the former players, and they had to redo it because of the race norming. Yeah. Or where black players were, black former players were given a different standard. Uh, you know, than uh, yeah. than white players, and they had yeah. to settle and with that. Yeah, and just to like um, make sure our listeners like are clear what we're talking about here. Black players were given a inherently lower um, baseline score for like how intelligent and cognitively with it they were to begin with. And so if CTE was rattling their brains around, they would get a lower reward in the NFL settlement. And then yeah, a few years later, but th- I mean, it's incredible that this wasn't like an enormous scandal that like really shook the league and caused a huge reckoning. It, it, there was news about it. But um, yes. but the NFL is, if not bulletproof, is the next best thing, I guess, with this kind of stuff. And 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 you mentioned it. You know, back in the height of this ten years ago, we thought you know we'd be playing flight football by now. We thought none of no parents would allow their 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 kids to play you know, youth or high school football. It would kill college football. It would kill the NFL. You know, and we've seen teams that you know even that team I looked into in Florida that could that kind of lost by like 50 points or probably 70 something points and then couldn't feel the team the next the next week or the next several weeks you know they're they're and even even, even, even high schools they it's harder for them to feel teams than it was but yeah there was no it has really not the nfl has grown since much bigger than it was 10 years ago when this topic was huge um and uh and there's you know but and the nfl to its credit and to the nfl player association credit they have strengthened concussion protocols and you know now there's beyond just having spotters up there, which it didn't even have before. You know, if you remember Colt McCoy, that was in 20, 2011, Colt, Colt McCoy quarterback was let back into the game, obviously concussed. And then a few years later, Case Keenum was in, I think that was 2016. Um, Case Keenum was, uh, you know, was was allowed to stay in the game uh, concussed. But that really hasn't happened since. And, it, and this is kind of, and that goes to a credit, you know, you have to credit both the NFL and the NFLPA for pushing for the system where, and, and an independent neuro um, neurospecialist, uh, it's typically a, neurosurgeon um that's who examined uh to a um uh during the during the game sunday against the bills um and we, I, we were all shocked he came back in the game but you know he was cleared he was you know there's an investigation going on that can will be wrapped up in a couple of weeks to show if they follow the followed all the protocols but uh, you know as of right now there's there's nothing saying that you know you know to a you know to a was allowed to play with concussion now if you come out later that 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 they they messed up but that would, you know, there's really, and as as much as as big of a player too it is, and how important that game was, it's still, you know, the NFL would, I'm guessing, would not like a uh, concussed player going back into the game, not only for the bad PR it gets, you know, but also, you know, the second impact syndrome you know, for concussions, where you have two concussions within a short period of time, that can really, it can, you can die from it. I've covered a story that like wow. probably the first or second MMA guy uh, was not UFC. It was a very lower lower level. You know, he had a concussion a few days before he fought again and then he basically his brain swelled up and he died so that's there's there's real concern about the uh about having a second impact so you know if if Tua somehow miraculously you know recovered and that was a concussion he hit his head on the heel pretty hard um you know but you know i you're not going to recover from a concussion in a few minutes you know they yeah. they and this and the nfl the spotters didn't even have to call down to stop the game to take him out it was immediately caught while they were watching it they pulled him pulled him off the sideline, pulled him into, a, you know, um, in, into uh, an area of the locker room to, you know, get his, you know, basically his head examined. But yeah, they, he, but he, he passed all the neurological tests and he resumed playing yesterday and they, and they won. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, so, all right. Well, oh, we need to, to wrap it there, but 
AJ, just give us a, getting back to Favre, um, what, what are the next things we should be watching out for here? I mean, uh, I just keep an eye on the court documents. Yeah, so there's basically, you know, we don't know, uh, you know, they, I think Bryant, Phil Bryant, the former governor, is going to be, a, is is also of interest. You know, there's, you know, they've, uh, you know, they've there's been so many indictments and so many people have already been um, caught up in this uh, from a criminal standpoint. Um, you know, the people I've talked to, you know, were, you know, have, have expected for a while, even before all this new, uh, this new, uh, information that came out that Favre would be a target um, and could be. Um, so it's going to be the court process is slow, and this has involved several agencies as in, um, and um, from an investigative standpoint and uh, from a prosecutor prosecutor standpoint as well. So this is still still ongoing. Um, I think there's going to be other indictments. Whether Favre is going to be one of them, we'll have to we'll we'll, we'll have to see. But uh, the people I talk to kind of expect that. Yeah. All right. Thank you, AJ. Your reporting has been really indispensable on this, both obviously for front office sports, but for the media world generally, you, you've been on top of the story from the get go and breaking news feels like every few days on this one. So thank you so much for joining us and unpacking the, you know, nesting dolls of, of the yeah. Favre scandals and, and everything they, they include. All right. Thanks, AJ. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much for tuning into the newsroom. As you can see, we're not going to shy away from the big topics, even when it gets serious, when it gets heavy, even when it gets light and fun. You know, we'll be doing the, the whole gamut because sports touches all of that. It's, it is, you know, to use a cliche, a microcosm of our society. And when we zoom in on the, the business and cultural aspects, we really get deep into that stuff. So please rate us, review us, and subscribe, most importantly, on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. You can check us out on YouTube, get the visual. Anywhere you get your podcasts, come check us out. Subscribe, and please tell your friends. This is just the third episode, and we're really trying to bring the, these conversations, both the, the fun stuff and the important stuff, to as big an audience as possible. We'll see you next week.